Turn with me in the Bible to the book of Philippians, chapter 2. Going to go from verse 9. Philippians chapter 2, from verse 9. Therefore God also has highly exalted him and given him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, of those in heaven and of those on earth and of those under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Join me to pray in the name of Jesus, Lord we invite your spirit into our midst right now. Fill our heart to receive your word. We're here believing you for a touch. We're here believing you for deliverance to take place in our midst. We're here believing you for a touch from heaven to transform our lives, to heal us, to deliver us, to set us free. May your word bring it in Jesus' name. I believe what the Scripture says here, that the name of Jesus Christ is power and fire that causes Satan and his agents to tremble and flee. I believe when you speak the name of Jesus Christ in faith, something happens which is beyond human understanding. I believe when you get into the Spirit in Christ Jesus, you will see the name of Jesus Christ working in your life. You will see the Word of God working in your life and you will see the power and anointing of God working against the darkness in your life and you will see your enemy defeated. There is no chain Satan has used to bind you to him the word of God cannot destroy. There is no cycle of life you find yourself stuck in that God Almighty cannot break and bring you out of. As He brought the Israelites out of Egypt, He will bring you out of your bad circumstances today. He will bring you out of nightmares today. He will bring you out of evil attacks today. He will bring you out of demonic possession. He will bring you out and you shall not go back. It's one thing to say the name of Jesus Christ. It is another thing to believe and confess it. Saying the name of Jesus alone will not bring the power of God on the scene. Saying the name of Jesus, repeating it a hundred times, will not change your life. But when you believe in that name, and you let your lips agree with what your heart confesses, then the power of God will be just like breathing. Healing, deliverance, salvation, and all of God's blessings are just like breathing when you believe with your mouth, with your heart. When you believe with your heart, where you confess with your mouth. The question now, how do we take that step of going from saying to believing what we say? The Bible says in the book of Hebrews chapter 10, verse 35 to 36, hold fast to your confession of faith. You are in need of endurance so that after you have done the will of God, you may receive the promise. In the book of Exodus chapter 30, God established a covenant of healing and a covenant of deliverance with His people. There is that same covenant that stands for you today. Jesus has promised to set you free. Jesus has promised to be your deliverer. Jesus has promised to be your healer, to be your healing provider. But you have a role to play. It is not all up to God to set you free. And it's not all up to you. Jesus Christ has paid the price for your complete healing, for your complete salvation, for everything you could need to live for Him here and now. And not just live, but reign in this life. Your role, He wants you to confess it. He wants you to believe it. He wants you to receive it and then see it fully in your life. This is why we need the Word of God. God does nothing without His Word. If you're here believing God to touch you today, He's going to touch you through His Word by His Spirit. 
If you believe God is going to deliver you today, I believe God's going to deliver you today. But for you to come into agreement with what God's Word says, it has to be through His Word and by His Spirit. Many people read the Bible like it's a novel. They read the Bible like a magazine and then wonder why it doesn't work in their life. The Bible is the book of books. It's not a book. It is the only book that can transform your life. Any other book will only inform you. But to get the information in the Bible to turn to transformation in your life, you need to go into meditation, which will lead to revelation. Hallelujah. Meditation in the Word of God will bring revelation. The book of Joshua, chapter 1, verse 8, says, Keep the Word of God in your mouth, in your mind, and in every conversation. This is the path to deliverance. This is the path to success. This is the path to what God has for you. Keep the Word of God in your mouth. Keep it in your mind. Meditate on it day and night. And then you'll receive revelation to do what it says. You cannot do what God has said because someone else tells you to. You can't do, you cannot be a doer of the Word because you read it somewhere or you went to a course. You can only do what God has said in His Word when you receive revelation from God that this is what you should do. If not, all you're doing will be repetition. All you're doing will be imitation of someone else. We are supposed to live by intimation from God. Hallelujah. Turn with me to the book of Ephesians chapter 6. Verse 13, uh, verse 12. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, and against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. You have come here today to an arena of liberty. Wherever the Spirit of the Lord is, in spirit and in truth, there is liberty. There is freedom. There is deliverance and there is salvation. We are here today because we believe God is going to do it again and again and again in your life. God cannot afford not to deliver you today because someone is somewhere waiting to hear your testimony. Someone is waiting to see the goodness of God come to pass in your life. Someone is waiting to see you go from being an addict to something to an addict to Jesus. Someone somewhere needs to hear your testimony. So God will not allow you to leave here today the same. You have a role to play. You have a role to play. Satan and his agents will not leave you just because you ignore them. Satan and his agents will not get out of your life just because you want them to go. You have to take a stand. You have to stand in the name of Jesus and command them to leave. You're going to see demons leaving people today because they are commanded to go in the name of Jesus. I want to share a little bit of my story. I was delivered. I was possessed with what called itself an ancient spirit. It had entered me. It said it was timeless. You can actually still find my, my video on YouTube. <laughs> Just look for Ed's deliverance. You'll find it there. <laughs> it said it entered me when I was very young, when I didn't understand that there was a trap set for me. The trap was I was playing video games and on, on the video games, I was also watching video game like um, guides and things like that. And every now and then something else would pop up as well. Something you didn't want to see. Some rant, you know how pop-ups work on YouTube and stuff. Yeah, one of them. So I clicked it thinking, oh, this could be, uh. and it was something I didn't expect. The demons confessed under the power of the Holy Spirit that this was how we entered his life and this was how we started destroying him. Anytime he's about to be great, anytime he's about to succeed, we make sure he misses out his blessing. He misses his opportunity. And I can confess that 
I was there at the Synagogue Church of All Nations for 16 and a half years. I would see people who came after me, promoted ahead of me. Even though I was working in the house of God, I wasn't delivered. I had been a Christian, brought up from primary school, from birth if you like. I had dreams and visions of one day working for God and living for God and that's what I devoted my life for. To all extent, I was an evangelist. I was a minister since the age of 16, 17. But I wasn't delivered. It wasn't until I received deliverance in the name of Jesus Christ that life started changing. I had realized something is not right about me. I shouldn't be where I am. I did have a relationship with God. I did love God. I did love seeing people being free. And it wasn't the first year when I got to the synagogue that my deliverance happened. It was about eight or nine years afterwards. So I had been in the house of God, seeing the, the, the power of God working for a long time. I thought I was free. I thought I was okay. I thought I had no problem. But seeing it happen time and time again and the confessions I heard in other people's lives, I started actually looking thinking, well, could be? Nah, surely not. <laughs> Looks pretty similar though. <laughs> and so I started saying, okay, God, I'm going to say I need to surrender finally. I had been doing so many things for God, but I had always kept that area that the demons mentioned, computer games. That was something I'd always kept as like a secret sin to myself. I knew, uh, I thought, oh, well, on the plea of there's not damaging anyone, it's not hurting anyone, it doesn't do anything wrong. Uh, I can just play whenever I have a minute or free time. I want to let it get in the way of my work or something. I mean, I couldn't do it there because there was no internet there, but still. Um, <laughs> I was like, okay. Uh, it's, not, it's nothing serious. Then God said, no, you need to surrender. And when I surrendered, God came on the scene like never before. I was given the opportunity to be on a prayer line for myself this time, whereas I've seen countless hundreds and thousands of people before. Put them there, rejoice, cried with them when they were coming, rejoiced with them when they were leaving. And still, my life had remained the same. So I got there. And as, um, then we had uh, some of the junior pastors that were praying for people. One of them touched me and something began to rise up in me. And I was like, is this me? <laughs> I had a choice. I could yield to that delivering influence or I could stifle it and stay the way I was. If you want to be delivered today, when it is your opportunity, when you come face to face with the power of God, you will still have a choice. When Jesus met the man who was blind, he didn't say, oh, you're blind, let me heal you. He said, what do you believe I can do for you? Jesus saw the lepers coming to him. It's very obvious. If you've never seen people with leprosy, I have. You know from a distance, the smell is huge. You know this, there's something very wrong. You know this is a leprous case. Jesus was not saying, what can I do for you? Because he was guessing or he didn't know. He needed to know they had faith and they believed for their miracle. You will have a choice today. As the prayer line is going to take place, as the mass prayer is going to take place, or viewers all over the world, wherever you are watching from, when it is time for prayer in a moment, it'll be a time for the Holy Spirit to encounter you. Something will start moving on your heart. Something will start making you feel uneasy. Any little distraction could come in at that moment. You're going to get a phone call. You're going to get an email. Your children are going to throw up. Yeah, I hope not, but I mean, anything could happen. <laughs> any, any, the devil could do anything because he knows you're one, he's one moment away from losing you forever. In your moment of decision, yield to the Holy Spirit and be Christ-filled. He will not force deliverance upon you. He will not force you to be free. He will not force you to have anything, but He offers it freely. 
Revelation 22 verse 17 says, If anyone is thirsty, let them come and receive the water of life for free. That is the power of the Holy Spirit. That is freedom in Christ. And it's available for you today. Don't waste your opportunity. Don't go through another cycle. Don't wait to see another opportunity for someone to pray the prayer of faith for you. Today could be your day. Today could be the time finally that demon will go. Finally that bondage will be broken. Finally that thought will stop. Finally that pain will be over. And the life you had dreamed of in Christ Jesus will begin to take place. So by the grace of God, I did yield. I did do all of what I'm telling you to do now. <laughs> and if you watch my video, oh, it took a lot of effort on the, on the part of that junior pastor. God bless them. <laughs> I was spitting. I was fizzing. I was rolling and raving. At one point, I tried to, to do some kind of, I don't know if it was martial arts or what it was. And at that point, the Holy Spirit was like, nah, -uh, you've done enough. <laughs> I was completely delivered. I was completely conscious for everything that was going on. It felt like I was watching myself on a screen. The man, the man of God asked a question. He didn't ask it to me. He asked it to the demon that had been exposed when he started praying for me. And I didn't know the answer to the question. But as he said it, the answer came in my heart, came in my mind. I still had a choice. Even then, even having been exposed that there's darkness in me and I need deliverance right now, I still had a choice to say and confess and be free or keep it to myself. After I started confessing that, he asked another question. What have you done to him? And now obviously, I don't know. I didn't know what, what it was about to say. As he asked the question, it came to my heart again. I'm just letting you know this. Deliverance is real. Deliverance can happen to you today. But when it does, you will have a choice. Are you going to yield to the Holy Spirit and say what he wants you to say and put that demon to public disgrace? That's what you're called to do in Colossians 2.16. Jesus has triumphed over them already. Now it's time for them to be disgraced in your life. Those demons have disgraced you for long enough. It's time to put, turn the tables in the name of Jesus. You need faith to do this. If you're here sitting in your reasoning faculties, going by what you see, going by what you hear, going by what things look like, you'll say, this is all a show. This is all acting. They paid people to do this. This can't really be real. I'm just imagining it. You have to step into faith to step into the realm of freedom. Freedom doesn't come to those who keep their Bible shut. Freedom comes to those who take the Word of God into their heart and make it part of them. Coming to the conclusion of this, there is power in the name of Jesus Christ, which no demon no negative power, no force in hell can stand against. All the divine power of heaven is behind the name of Jesus to accomplish the purpose of your salvation. But you have a choice. Accept it. Yield yourself to the authority of the Word of God and receive His blessing in every area of your life. Lastly, I want to take you to the book of Matthew chapter 8. Uh, John chapter 8, praise God. John chapter 8, verse 12. Then Jesus spoke to them again, saying, I am the light of the world. He who follows me shall not walk in darkness, but have the light of life. You can have that light of life today. It's only in Christ Jesus. There is no other way. There is no other light. There is no other power that can set you free. As long as you continue to walk by senses 
and not by what the Word of God tells you, you will walk in darkness. What does darkness mean? Your situation. You will be under natural circumstances. Whatever happens to everyone else is exactly what will happen to you. You'll live under sickness. You'll live under bondage. You'll live under want. You'll live under need. You'll live under lack. You will never live abundant life if you live in darkness. Satan has riches. He does. But his riches without peace. His, Satan's riches ensnare just like poverty does. Satan's fame ensnares just like in, in obscurity does. Accept Jesus today. Receive light, the light of God in your world that said, let there be light and darkness scattered. The extent to which you think the thoughts of Christ, the power of Jesus will come upon your life. Hey, thanks for watching this video. If you enjoyed this content and this was a blessing to you, would you help us and hit thumbs up so that it could help more people to discover this video. It costs you nothing, but it can go a long way to help with the algorithm. As well as if you're not subscribed to our channel, hit subscribe, click on the bell so that you can be reminded each time that we upload videos. Thank you so much for being a part of this community. If you're interested in learning more about Hungry Gen, our internship, our conferences, deliverance, and so many other things, go to hungrygen.com for more information. And as always, remember, better is not good enough, the best is yet to come.